When I married Aaron Walston, we moved out to his tobacco farm. It was about 10 miles outside of Tarboro. And I have to say, the isolation of that little farm was something I had not known before. By the time I was 20, our baby Patty Estelle was two. And we worked hard getting that crop out every year. I didn't think much about whether there would be anything else for me. But then the summer of 1937 changed my life forever. At that time, I didn't understand all the things that happened, but I knew they were irrevocable. When my grandmother Georgiana died, I was as lonely as I'd ever been in my life. Georgiana had raised me ever since my mother died. Sorry about your grandmother. Thank you. Are you going to stay at her house? No, I'm scared to stay there by myself. Well, what about living at your daddy's? His wife, Ruth, is my mother's younger sister. I know. Well, I feel kind of funny about that. What are you doing? Is baby asleep? Yeah, baby's asleep. Wanted to last night, you just shrugged me off. I had to get up the crack of dawn. Aaron, sometimes I think you're just doing this because you can't think of anything better to do. Daddy hired boys from all over eastern North Carolina to work at the funeral home. When his friends couldn't think of what to do with their boys, they sent them to Mr. Will for a job. What say, boys? One Will. Oh, me. I got that Clark Gable picture at the theater. Or you don't wear no undershirt? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
You don't want to see that one, do you, Will? How do you expect me to keep the theater running? This fella looking for a job. Well, what you want about? Oh, I got too many boys here now, Struthers. No not matter. They know you all over East North Carolina for having a soft heart. <laughs> I don't have any work. I had a room upstairs, plumb full. from Tar County. I bet she's a walk away from CCC camp. I'm looking for Mr. Will. Ask inside. I don't work here. like you told me? to uh, Eureka, see Aunt Sally. Thought some of you all might want to ride by Tarboro with us. I believe I'll just stay here. I got my new seedlings just getting started. But y'all come in. Roxy, why don't you and baby go on in? Maybe we'll do that. There's your grandpa over there. There's your grandma. Yeah. Baby, you look like a cat under a collar. <laughs> Backyard there. So what happened to the coffin for the Mr. Massey doll? Well, we haven't played in his coffin since Raider tried to sail off the top. He did? Daddy's gonna have him hauled away. Oh. I had copied the design for my playhouse out of my weekly reader and then built it out of old coffins. The main thing my friends at school wanted to know was, had I ever seen anybody dead? Boom! Right <laughs> off! saw a dead person. We heard at school that this man had got burned up, that they had him down here. We pushed the door open real fast, and there was this little thing lying up on the table like a log out of fireplace. We went flying up to the front of the house, and then we saw somebody sitting on the stairs watching us. He wasn't like the other funeral homeboys. He said, you must be Mr. Will's girl. I told him I was as little a skull, Roxy is as big a skull. 
He said if she's any prettier than you, she must be real pretty. I couldn't believe I was standing there talking to a grown man like that. Who you got in there, Will? Old Fate Renfro. You remember him? Poor old fellow. He got hit broadside with the freight train over here to Golden Weed. Tear him up much? Oh, yeah, he looks bad. Mm -hmm. I worked on him near all night. That boy Jack came in and helped me. He's good. With his hands, you know. He's cool about it, too. He was eating a bit of honey bar ten minutes after we quit. You gonna keep it? Oh, I can't. I, I can't, Strother. I, I, it'd be a natural, you know, real natural. But, you know, I got too many boys working here now. Jack's a right smart fellow. He, he reminds me of somebody, but I can't think who. Ah! What the hell? It's just Renfro giving you goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing sneaking up on me like that? What's he doing over there? Go on, you shaggy-headed rascal. Go on. If you think you'd get by some gal down at the hotel. <laughs> Roxy, I believe you could use a dose of Mr. Applewhite's Capudine. You always look like you'd be afraid to say boo to a goose. Two weeks later, in the middle of March, the old hearse pulled up our drive. At first, I thought it was Daddy coming to see me. But it was Jack Ruffin. I'm Jack Ruffin. Hey. You want to draw? What do you want? I'm sorry, I thought you knew I was coming out. All I know is you're somebody I've never seen before in my life. Well, Miss Walston, if your husband didn't tell you, I guess I will. Come to help out. Your daddy run the funeral home? Mr. Will Stanton? He's the one who sent me over here. That was Neb, just dropped me off. Mr. Will said you might be able to use some help out here. That's right, I sure could. Come on. I had seen Jack Ruffin before. He was with Georgiana in a dream. hot dog in town.
Jack Ruffin's coming out next Saturday. Why don't you kick us up a chicken stew? Chicken stew? When did you get to know this Jack Ruffin so good? Fixing the well. We're gonna check on it Saturday, and he's bringing his guitar out. We're gonna pick a few songs. Well, you hardly ever see a soul. I didn't know you knew him. Well, I didn't know him before this morning. He gave me this mandolin string. Had it right there in his suitcase. He just gave it to me. The wind was blowing hard the night Jack came for dinner. And I couldn't help thinking about Georgiana's superstitions. You know, every time something bad's happened to me in my life, it's happened to me in the month of March. It's like a big black cloud that just hangs there. There's something in the wind. North Carolina. I like it. Well, how many boys does Mr. Will have over there now? Too many. Must be pretty stuffy in that. Mm. Excuse me. Watch your fingers. Excuse me. What's your baby's name? It's Patty Estelle. But everybody just calls her baby. Except Aaron's mother, Estelle. She calls her Estelle. Like every syllable is just nailed down. Planning on coming out tonight? Yeah, I just got me some new strings this morning. Listen, Neb wanted to come out if that's okay. Well, uh, I don't want it to turn into a get together. Okay, I'll see you tonight. talk to you about this stuff. You're a married man with a family to boot. Besides, you don't want to hear about my date with Ava. I got news for you, Jack. Me and Ava Chisholm went steady in eighth grade. Is that so? Yeah, it is. In fact, I'll never forget one Saturday afternoon, Ava and I were over at her sister's house. I was sitting on the couch. <laughs> Ava had her head in my lap. All of a sudden, she shifts around. She says, Aaron, your belt buckle's hitting me in the head. I said, Ava, I'm not wearing a belt. 
<laughs> Her sister looked at me real embarrassed. I don't think Gavin knew what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> So where'd you say your parents are? My parents are dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right, it was a long time ago. Well, I made you all a pecan pie. And we'll be up there in a minute. Come on, baby. Let's go. Jack, um, Aaron's not here right now. <laughs> Ready. Hey, Aaron. Some weather, huh? Yep. Yeah. How's this gonna be conceivable? This is perfect. That's what this is. This is perfect to see. Me. You know how muddy the roads will be. I don't know why you don't just stay out here. You can just make yourself a bed in the spare room. I guess it would be a lot easier if I was just staying out here. Well, why don't you bring your clothes and things on out? You know I could use the hell. I know you could. You tell Neb to bring my things out now and just not go back. As soon as it quits raining. We have plenty to do then. Roxy, why don't you clean out that shift robe in the spare room so Jack can put his things in it? She's only got her sewing stuff in there now. rest when it comes time to prime. As soon as that sun ever comes back out, it'll get to growing real fast. It's quit raining. Sure did. Well, I guess I'll get on back to town now. 
Sí. Sí. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. Pick a little tonight? Nah, I think we're gonna go on to bed early. But you know where the keys are. I mean, if you need the truck to go in and see Ava or anything like that, you go ahead and use it. Neb came by last night. Uh -huh. Need some help with a wreck out by Johnson Crossroads. Old preacher and his wife swerved in a ditch, hurt pretty bad. Roxy, Ray says Daddy needs me to come over to help him start to fix that back fence. Horses got out again last night. I gotta get over there. Sorry I can't watch Baby today. Well, do you think you can take Baby to Daddy's? Yeah, I can do that. Come on, pretty baby. You're gonna go see Callie. There you go, baby. Yeah. Wanna go for a ride in that big black car? That's where we're going. Ah. Why don't you get that hot hair cut off?
proxy. I thought you were halfway to Raleigh. I just want to say that I appreciate every one of y'all out here. I have a real good feeling about the crop this year. Treat every leaf as special. Don't let the littlest leaf burn up in the sun. We gotta eat. Get much sleep with this tobacco cure, do you? Can't afford it. Two years ago, I lost my best barn. Burn up. Well, you want me to stay down here tonight? No, I'll stay down here tonight. You stay down here tomorrow night, okay?
Johnny, you have to move a little faster. You're moving like you're sleepwalking. Can you pass me some more of those string beans? Three days tops to show me praise. Has your boot got a hold on ready? Perfect time. I'm gonna need patching. Perfect. Let's get back, boys. I think it's fixing to get real warm this afternoon. It sure is. Listen, we gotta get those mules first. Okay, they're gonna need some water. I think we ought to get on over to Haas Landing for that barbecue. You know, the only reason I didn't go sit up with him last night to help him cook that pig was... Well, that's my best barn curing out there. I just wanted to see it. I just don't care a thing about going. Not go? I don't see why. I'm just not going. I feel like I'm in the way over there. Now, Roxy, you know my family thinks so much of you. And they love to see baby. Aaron, there's something about the 4th of July that just tears my nerves all to pieces. It's all those loud noises and Firecrackers and all, and those folks driving around in those fast pickup trucks, drunk. Look, it's just too hot. Everybody's crazy. They're expecting us, Roxy. No. Excuse me, I can't hear you. No. Well, you do what you please, and
crooked double love line? Take a picture of me, baby. Well, now we're gonna try a little trick. Some picture, huh? Cooking some peas and baby tomorrows. Where is she? You can take her home now. Okay. Keep her quiet and keep her in bed. Oh, and if she should happen to wake up tonight, you might rub her with some more of this. I'll come out and uh, check on her in the morning, see how she's getting on. Are there going to be scars? Probably, yes. How's baby? Where's the coat at? Can't you take care of your own family? Let me take her. Roxy, 
Something Daddy wants me to talk to you about. Daddy mentioned something about Jack staying here. It might be better. He said we ought to get the first back at the market and then give him some money and send him off. I've already told him. I told Jack that after the opening sale, we'll be able to manage without him. Why don't you tell him too? Somebody at the church mentioned to the folks that it didn't look right with you and Jack staying in the same house. Talk to Jack about it. down here to tell you, Jack, you have to go. I'm married. I have a baby. You could run off with me. I'm married, Jack. How they met? They're bidding a little low. Yeah, I heard that. They'll pick up. What up? Better. Starting out of trouble, Jack. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Hey, this Hey. American. Hot dogs from the Greeks. First day of market, 1937. I never thought I'd get a Ten. <laughs> oh, I never thought I would. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, she's worth it and all. I just, I never thought I'd get it. They're having a dance down at Rainwright's this year. I don't see why we can't go. You get baby up early. We can go on in, take in the whole festival. Jack can take care of things around here.
I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Jack still had a pull for me. And I thought then that maybe he always would. But I had to make a choice. All I hoped was that Aaron and I could forget everything that had happened and start over. Enjoy yourself last night? Oh, the pageant was beautiful. The whole family was there, and it was just, uh, it was wonderful. Nice festival? Oh, it sure was. Listen, I need you to ride with me over to Daddy's. I want to get that new truck I bought from him before we go down to Carolina Beach. You can drive it back here. gonna get stung. God damn it, Roxy. Come on down back at the barn, Aaron. I want to show you something I killed down there today. Strange. Some strange kind of animal. on baby we gotta go go where don't ask me that just get your clothes put some things in your suitcase we gotta go now get her blankets Get in the car. I'll tell you about it later. See what's on my overalls, you won't want to go home. 
I can't keep it in any longer. I hit him not too far from the hole. I hit him at the hole, Roxy, the hole. The hole I dug. I dug Is everyone okay? Roxy. I hit him twice. What? At the hole. What? I dug the hole, Roxy. I dug the hole behind the barn. Saturday, while y'all were in town. And I sat out there and I looked into it all day and all night. And I called him out there and I hit him and I covered him up. me now and say we've got to go we've got the bus tickets to Birmingham I know somebody we can stay with We picked up Jack Ruffin when he was getting on the bus. He told us where he buried your husband. We called up to Tarboro. Some of your people went out there and they dug him up. He made a full confession. Says you two planned it together. You never saw those bloody overalls till yesterday? No, sir. You sure about that? Yes. You real sure? She'll be arraigned on Monday morning. She's gonna be arraigned, Roger. to say this to you, Roxy, but I want you to know a little about what it was like. You know, I'm used to that phone ringing all times of the night. But this time, it, 
I just didn't know what to think. I mean, it had to be somebody crazy. But it did finally get through to me. That they were saying the sheriff in Georgia had called. And then Aaron's probably dead, and you and Jack were off somewhere. I called Ruth to come to the phone and try to make some sense out of it. But she... Just as bad as me at first. I told them I'd be right on out there. And they said it's no use. Of course, I went. I couldn't get the farm fast enough. Somehow, I thought you might be there, even though they said you were in Georgia. When I got out there, they'd already gone right to the grave. Sorry hole, not any way from the barn. Anybody could have found it. Anybody could have found that hole. What was the matter with that boy, Jack? What could he have been thinking of? What was I thinking of? Everybody in the world's got some kind of secret. But everybody doesn't get found out and have the pictures put in the paper. We're gonna do the best we can. When you walk in there tomorrow, you stand up straight and hold your shoulders back. Are you in love with Jack Ruffin? Why didn't you go to your husband's funeral? Are you really in love with this guy, Jack Ruffin? Please, just hold your picture. Mrs. Walton, what's up? My wife, too, please. Mrs. Walton. Did you murder your husband? Brother Ruffin, answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the Please read the confession. <clears throat> I stayed home all day Saturday and Sunday while the Walstons were gone. 
I dug the grave on Saturday about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I used the shovel which I got from the Walston's house. I left the shovel at the hole. I hit him in the back of the head with the shovel, knocked him out the first lick. He was lying down on his face when I hit him the second time. I had been sleeping with her. No use to say I love her and will die loving her. I had intercourse with her from June. In a way, she knew I killed him. In a way, she didn't. She wanted to run off with me, but she couldn't because of her husband. So I killed her husband. Now, Mrs. Walston, uh, would you tell the gentleman of the jury how you met and got to know Jack Ruffin? He came out to help my husband with the well. And then he started helping with the tobacco crop. Aaron told him to come on and, and move in. Aaron would go down to the barn one night, and Jack would go down the next. I got up while Aaron was still sleeping. And I went down to the barn. And I got back before he woke up. Now, Ms. Ruffin, I'm going to ask you a little bit about those nights down in the barn. I am Mrs. Walston. But those nights down in the barn were your idea, weren't they? He asked me to come down there. But they were your idea, weren't they? I wanted to go. So you were in no way forced to go down into that barn, were you, Mrs. Ruffin? I am Mrs. Walston. Now, please describe to the gentlemen of the jury just what happened on the first occasion you had intercourse with him. You heard the question, ma'am. Please describe to the gentlemen of the jury the first occasion on which you had intercourse with him. My husband had gone off. And it happened in the garden. In the garden? And the next time? I don't know. It might have been the next day. And these relations did occur every day thereafter, did they not? Sometimes I was sick. But when your husband was gone and you weren't sick, it happened every day, didn't it? Please let the record reflect that the witness has nodded the answer yes. For him, for the state, and for everybody else, for God's sake, don't turn him loose. But a life sentence in prison would constitute a far more severe punishment than the death penalty. Whatever damnation comes out of this case, she is the foundation for it. Now, gentlemen, you have heard the evidence. After a comparatively short time, this man was living in the house with more freedom than the woman's husband. She has been unfaithful to her child, unfaithful to her husband, and unfaithful to her God. Not in the annals of the history of North Carolina have we had a murder of such brutality as to compare with this one. Gentlemen, I want you to return a verdict of guilty. I want you to send Jack Ruffin and Roxana Walston to the gas chamber. No. Wait. She never did say she'd run off with me. I pushed her into the car that night. She didn't know what happened. And when I finally told her, she ran away from me and hid. They said yesterday that I do not have a heart. I 
I do have a heart. And there's grief in my heart at the bottom. We'll hold her up here. I'll get her some water. Watch your head. We have a verdict in the Walston murder case. The jury went out at 11.25 and they were back at 12.05. They found Mrs. Roxanna Walston not guilty of conspiracy to murder. And they found Mr. Jack Ruffin guilty of murder in the first degree with no recommendation for mercy. Hankers was fluttered as the judge intoned the death sentence. I know Kate will be happy to have her. That sounds just like something a man would say. That's half her trouble now. Listening to ghost stories all her life and always doing something some man thought she ought to do. How can she go to Virginia or anywhere else? She needs to learn to do something first. Could you lower your voice? You know, this was your mother's bed. That's why I brought you in here. There's no better medicine in this whole world than lying in your mama's bed. It was our mama's bed, too. I lay right here myself when I wasn't much older than you are, talking to mama. When I was in that tourist camp in Georgia with him, I didn't know how to say no. Can't go with you. Never said no to anybody in my life. Except for Aaron on the 4th of July. Different things happen to different people, Roxy. Don't think you're the only one something bad ever happened to. What really matters is how you behave after it's over. And it is over. Daddy, I'd like to go to the farm today. You gotta get your driving license sometime. I'm going to. And then, I think you and me and Ruth ought to, we ought to talk about you getting on a train, heading up to Fredericksburg, staying with Aunt Kate for a while. Daddy, I know I won't stay in Tarboro for my whole life, but right now my child needs her family. She needs a stable home. I'm gonna stay right here and I'm gonna ride it out. Just the same as you and Ruth and our whole family. 